According to Ian Stewart, nature is nothing if not rhythmic, and its rhythm are many and varied. Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to talk about the Ian Stewart's Nature's Numbers Chapter 7, The Rhythm of Life. So if you want to learn more about this topic, please keep on watching. You see, if we are to look around us, especially in nature, we may not realize it, but mathematics has a role in everything that we see. Every living thing in this world follows a rhythm, cycle, or a pattern that makes everything beautiful. This chapter consists of four significant concepts which are Gates Analysis, Oscillation Concept, Hopf Bifurcation, and Symmetry Breaking Theory. Starting off with Gates Analysis, in page 94, Gates Analysis is defined as a branch of mathematics that deals with the study of patterns and movement in motion. Gates analysis is a way and a tool used to assess the way we walk or run. For example, the horse possesses different kinds of gates. In a very low speed, it walks. At a medium speed, it trots. And at high speed, it gallops. But in page 99, it is stated that some animals only possess one gait and one rhythmic pattern in moving their limbs. The organizing principle behind many biological cycles is the mathematical concept of an oscillator, a unit whose natural dynamic causes it to repeat the same cycle of behavior over and over again, as stated on page 94. Biology hooks together huge circuits of oscillators which interact with each other to create complex patterns of behavior. Why do systems oscillate at all? Page 95 answers that that this is the simplest thing you can do if you don't want or are not allowed to remain still. This is the reason why a caged tiger paces up and down. Its motion results from a combination of two constraints. First, it feels restless and does not wish to sit still. Second, it is confined within the cage and cannot simply disappear over the nearest hill. The simplest thing you can do when when you, ha you have to move but can't escape altogether is to oscillate. Of course, there is nothing that forces the oscillation to repeat a regular rhythm. The tiger is free to follow an er er regular path around the cage, but the simplest option, and therefore the one most likely to arise both in mathematics and in nature, is to find some series of motion that works and repeat it over and over again. Most common example for oscillations are the, uh, are the tides in the sea and the movement of a simple pendulum in a clock. The pendulum moves back and forth and hence it creates an oscillating movement. The vibration of strings in guitar and other instruments are also examples of oscillations. Mechanical oscillations are called vibrations. A particle of being vibrated means it oscillates between two points about this central point. Many oscillations arise out of steady states. As conditions change, a system that has a steady state may lose it and begin to wobble periodically. In 1942, the German mathematician Eberhard Hoff found a general mathematical condition that guarantees such behavior. In his honor, this scenario is known as Hoff bifurcation. The word bifurcation is used because of a particular mental image of what is happening, in which the periodic oscillations grow out from the original steady state like a ripple on a pond growing out from its center. The physical interpretation of this mental picture is that the oscillations are very small to start with and steadily become larger. The speed with which they grow is unimportant here. For example, the sound made by a clarinet depends on half bifurcation. As the clarinetist blows air into the instrument, the reed, which was stationary, starts to vibrate. If the air blows gently, the vibration is small and produces a soft note. If the musician blows harder, the vibration grows and the note becomes louder. The important thing is that the musician does not have to blow an oscillatory way, that is, in a rapid series of short pops to make the reed oscillate. Symmetry is a mathematical concept as well as an aesthetic one, and it allows us to classify different types of regular pattern and distinguish between them. Symmetry breaking is a more dynamic idea, describing changes in pattern. 
The symmetry braking theory explains how animals can change gait without having a gearbox. A single network of oscillators can adapt different patterns under different conditions. The possible transitions between gates are also organized by symmetry. The faster the animal moves, the less symmetry its gates has. More speed breaks, more symmetry as stated on page 102. There are many different kinds of symmetry. The most important ones are reflections, rotations, and translations, or less, formally flips, turns, and slides. If you take an object in the plane, pick it up and flip it over into its back. You get the same effect as you had reflected it in a suitable mirror. To find where the mirror should go, choose some point on the original object and look at where that point ends up when the object is flipped. The mirror must go halfway between the point and its image, at right angles to the line that joins them. Reflection can also be carried out in three-dimensional space, but now the mirror is of a more familiar kind, namely a flat surface. Where do symmetries of natural patterns come from? Think of a steel pond, so flat that can be thought of as a mathematical plane and large enough that it might as well be a plane for all that the edges matter. Toss a pebble into the pond. You see patterns, ripple circular waves seemingly moving outward away from the point of impact of the pebble. We've all seen this and nobody is greatly surprised. After all, we saw the cause. It was the pebble. If you don't draw the pebbles in or anything else that might disturb the surface, then you won't get waves. All you get is still flat, planar pond. Ripples on the pond are example of broken symmetry. An ideal mathematical plane has a huge amount of symmetry. Every part of it, of it is identical to every other part. You can translate the plane through any distance in any direction, rotate it through any angle about any center, reflect it in any mirror line, and it still looks exactly the same. The pattern of circular ripples, in contrast, has less symmetry. It is symmetric only with respect to rotation about the point of impact of the pebble, and the reflection in mirror lines that run through the point. No translation, no other rotation, no other reflection. The pebble breaks the symmetry of the plane. In the sense that after the pebble has disturbed the pond, many of its symmetries are lost, but not all. And that's why we see a pattern.